in a, a new series of teaching. I had just done some teaching last month on 20 ways that faith comes. And, and I'd like to speak on 20 ways, at least 20 ways that God leads and guides and directs us. Now, it, it's going to be a little bit difficult to just jump into how God leads and guides and directs us without understanding the, 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 that which needs to be necessary for God to lead and guide and direct us. See, because God is, God is speaking to every human being all the time. God is always speaking. God's speaking to us through many different means and methods and ways, natural and supernatural. But man doesn't listen. And the reason why man doesn't listen is because our hearts are not right with God. So it's imperative that our hearts are right with God. As a matter of fact, that's, if you go back into the Old Covenant, when the children of Israel wanted a king, and it wasn't the will of God, he told them it wasn't his will, but they ignored him. And that's what I'm talking about. We can ignore the voice of God. And most times, most people do. And actually, the only way <clears throat> salvation is work, salvation works is, is when you begin to listen to God. Uh, you know, it says, unless the Father draws you, you can't come. So everybody that comes, they've responded to the voice of God. They've hearkened to the voice of God. They obeyed the voice of God. And for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, I, I know the Scripture says, for as many uh, that, that the just shall live by faith or the just shall walk by faith. Well, really, we could say it this way. The just shall be led by God. Or Jesus said, and we'll look at this tonight in John chapter 10. You can open your Bibles to, John to, to Psalms 23 if you have your Bible, Psalms 23. But he says, my sheep hear my voice and another than I follow. Now, uh, it, it's so important because, you know, there's so many different voices in the world. And the Bible says, actually, in the book of Corinthians, every one of them has significance or has meaning. There's many voices in the world. But God's people, they listen to his voice. See, your, your, your body speaks to you all the time. Your mind speaks to you, your emotions speaks to you, your feelings speak to you, symptoms in your body speak to you, circumstances speak to you, people speak to you, the weather speaks to you, your dog speaks to you, your cat speaks to you. No, stop it. Your birds, if you got birds in your house, they're, they're talking to you, aren't they? I mean, so your automobiles talks to you. You're driving down a road and it begins to backfire. And, oh, oh, oh Betsy, uh oh, she's got a problem. There's water in the gas. So everything is speaking to you. No, no, that doesn't mean that these voices, you know, but we're not supposed to be. And, matter of fact, if you go, how did man get out of the will of God? Because the woman listened to the voice of a snake. And how did the man get out of the will of God? God said, because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife. Now, God may speak to you through many different ways because God spoke through Balaam, the prophet, through a donkey. Now, there was nothing wrong with that donkey speaking to Balaam because God was speaking through Balaam. So this is what you have to do. You have to decide, is this God speaking to me through this circumstance? Is this God speaking to me through my body? You know, sometimes your body will tell you, I am tired and I need rest. Your body might even tell you, you're not eating the right kind of food. You're not taking care of yourself. Listen, God can speak to us in many different ways, in many different forms and fashions, but the key is we have to, dis we got to, we got to, we got to know, is this God talking to me or is this the devil? Is this the flesh? You know, it says we overcome the flesh. How? How do we overcome the flesh? By the spirit. We mortify the flesh by the spirit. And how do we do that? By listening to the voice of the spirit. 
the voice of the Spirit will speak to us, which will contradict the voice of our flesh, of our feelings, of our emotions. And, and we'll get into it. We know what the, the very first foundation that God speaks to us through is through this book called the Bible. And every time that we hear a voice, whether that voice be the voice of our body, the voice of our feelings, the voice of our emotions, the voice of people, the voice, you know, the Bible says a wise man listens to counsel. What counsel is that? That which is in agreement with this book. But it says only a fool listens to counsel. What counsel is that? That which is contrary to this book. And so we know this book is the foundation. It is the bedrock. It is, it is the reality. This is the voice of God, number one. And God will never tell us to do something contradictory to his book. And we see the voice of the Father through the Son. When Jesus spoke, it was not him, it was the Father speaking. Now, here's what's amazing. The, the, the absolute answer to our complete, utter success is by doing nothing but what the Father tells us to do. Nothing but what the Father tells us to do. Well, I won't go to work then. Well, you just contradicted the voice of the Father because the Bible says if a man doesn't work, neither should he eat. And there's profit in all labor. Now, you've got to take this all in context, you understand. See, because of the fact you can't, you, you, there, I know there's, there's different seasons. You know, there's a time to speak and a time to be quiet. There's a time to live and a time to die. There's a time to rejoice and a time to cry. So we have to get in tune with God. And when it says that, that, that the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro upon the face of the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of them whose hearts are perfect towards him, in the Hebrew it means in agreement with him or they're walking in step with his voice. It's funny because really we're called trees of righteousness, but one thing that is emphasized about us is that we're called sheep. And we know, we know Psalms 23 is, is, is written by David who was a shepherd. Now, what's wonderful about our shepherd is that he was the Lamb of God, and he is the Lamb of God. So he was both a lamb and he is a shepherd. And he's been touched with the feelings of our infirmities because he knows what we as sheep go through. Now, David also recognized himself as a lamb. In Psalms 23, I believe there's a lot more revelation in it than what we really comprehend. But really, the key to our success is simply doing what God tells us to do. Or not doing what he tells us not to do. For instance, he says, don't put, no, according to the book, don't put nothing wicked before your eyes. Now, if we would just listen to God in that regard, we'd have a lot less torment and a lot less sorrow. Put nothing wicked before your eyes. Uh, there's so many other things. I know Brother Mark right now has been teaching the commandments of Christ, and it's Christ in us that gives us the ability to do the will of God. But he says, speak not evil of your, of your brothers and your sisters. If we would not speak evil of our brothers and sisters, it'd make things a lot easier. See, everything that God tells us to do is really for our benefit. You know, just as parents, if you're good parents, you, 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 you're not trying to deny your children that which is beneficial, that which is healthy, that which is productive, that which is constructive. You're, you're denying them that which would hurt them. And that's all that God's wanting to do. He says he's wanting to bless you. He's wanting to heal you. He's wanting to deliver you. He's wanting to cause you to succeed. Matter of fact, Jesus said it is my Father's will that you produce much fruit. God wants us to have much fruit. But you got to listen to what he has to say. So we're, we're going to teach. We're going to show within the word of God there's 20 ways, basic ways, that God will speak to us. And I will tell you right now that I have experienced in, in every one of these ways. And I'm sure when we get done, you'll discover that you might have experienced quite a number of them too. But you understand the very first way that God speaks to us, of course, is through his word. Now, if you won't listen to his word... There's not much he can do for you. 
Because remember the time that the rich man died and Lazarus was in the bosom of Abraham and, and the rich man cried out and said to Abraham, Abraham, give, get, get, I just want a little bit of water. Just let Lazarus give me a little bit of water. And he says, I can't because there's a chasm between you and, 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 and him and, and, you, and, 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 and in your lifetime you experienced the good stuff, but he experienced the bad. For in other words, you got what you wanted. Now it's time for him to be rewarded. He said, well, send him back from the dead then and let him go tell my seven brothers. Now, remember, this is not a parable. Jesus did not say, every time he told a story, it would say, and Jesus told a parable. This is really what happened. So Jesus, and they might have all known who he was talking about. He wasn't talking about Lazarus, the the, you know, the, the matter of fact, isn't that amazing? It's Lazarus that was raised from the dead. But he said, even if Lazarus was raised from the dead, your brothers wouldn't listen. He said, they have Moses and the prophets, and if they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't listen as if a man was raised from the dead. For in other words, there's something about the word of God. There's something powerful, something awesome, because it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. If they won't listen to this book, they won't listen to anything. So for us to be led by the Spirit of God, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, and, and, and really in the Greek it's we also, the mature sons, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the mature sons of God. So God wants to lead us and guide us and direct us, and everything that Jesus did, he was led and guided by the Father. His whole perspective was that he had his eyes on the Father his whole life, and all he did, it, he, he knew the will of the Father. Matter of fact, did you know the Bible says he will guide you with his eyes? What do you mean guide you with his eyes? You can become so sensitive, and this, this is another issue, see, because it, there's a lot more than just knowing how God leads us and guides us. We've got to become sensitive to God. Remember he says he's going to take out the stony, the, 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 the heart of stone, the hard heart. And remember, he kept on saying, don't harden your heart, don't harden your heart, don't harden your heart. What do you mean harden your heart? It, it means, you know, there's some people, you know, they, they, um, you know, they have a little baby, and every time that little baby cries, they're at it. Boom, boom, boom. But after a while, the baby cries, and they don't respond as quick. And, and they can harden their heart so much to where the baby can be crying all, you know, for hours on end, and you just completely ignore them. You harden your heart. Or uh, driving your car. I'm, this isn't an answer. You hear click, 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 click in your engine, right? Dick, 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 dick. You know, something's going on. And you pull her over, you check it out. You know, I got to get that fixed. But you know what? You know, seven months later and it's going whap, 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 whap. And you're just driving down the road. And the guy goes past your car and they're smoking. Their engine's smoking. And you go past the car going whoop, 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 whoop. And it says, why don't you get that car fixed? Oh, I, you know, I'm so used to that whoop, 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 I didn't even recognize it. Well, that engine's going to blow up, and one day the engine blows up because they didn't deal with it. We just experienced it with my son's car. Well, listen, God begins to speak to you, and you ignore him, and you, you're hardening your heart to the voice of God. How you treat your wife, how you talk to people, how you spend your time, what you're watching on TV, you harden your heart, and you harden your heart, and you harden your heart, and to where there's no remedy. And you don't even know it. You're, and you're headed for hell, man, because you harden your heart. We've got to watch the voices we're listening to. We've we got we to gotta really make sure we're hearing from heaven. You know, and let me, and I, I've said this for over 30 some years don't be quick to say, God told me. Because every time you say, God told me, you're going to give an account to God. And if God did not tell you that, you're in trouble. You better make sure God told you that. You better not just say, God told me. See, I say it in a different way. I try to use a little bit of wisdom. I, 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 I perceive. I think. I think. You know, even when I go to ministering in the gifts, I say, is this happening to you? I don't say, God told me you got this wrong with your body. Matter of fact, you know, you may not realize it, and I just want to touch on this a little bit. You know, if somebody stands there and they pass gas, right, 
it don't bother them too much, but everybody else is gagging. Let, let me say this. You, you, there's a lot of pride in the statement, God told me. There's a lot of pride in that. God told me. There's a lot of pride in that. Because what you've just done is nobody can challenge you. No, when you say, how can you challenge somebody when they go, God told me? You can't challenge them. But should we not have the right to challenge each other? Should we not have the right to say, well, let's look at this. Is this in line with the Bible? Is this in line with the Word? Is this because you could be deceived? Easily deceived. We can be deceived. Pastor Mike can be deceived. Hello? I can believe that God told me something and God didn't tell me. So I'm always, now there's been times when the gift of faith rose up in me like the time when he, I knew that I knew that I knew my foot was healed. But I didn't go around telling, God told me my foot was healed and I'm walking around with my foot in a cast. You saw the evidence. See, let people see the evidence you've heard from God. You don't have to tell people you've heard from God. They'll see the evidence of it. If Pastor Mike heard from God, you will see the evidence. And then, here's the, here's, and, and I'm just going to, this is a smorgasbord right now, getting ready to, to teach this. I didn't even get into Psalms 23 yet. I, and I might have to do four or five sermons along this line before we really get into this. Because let's say, for instance, you did hear from God. You did, which is to me no big Whoopee! Because every human being hears from God. No, no, you need to get this in your heart. Every human being, what y'all looking at? Every human being hears from God. Every human being does. Even the sinner does. So you simply mean you respond to God, which you should have anyways. So, if you heard from God, hallelujah, you're supposed to. My sheep hear my voice, you're supposed to. It's like saying, praise the Lord, I took a breath. Well, you're supposed to breathe. You're supposed to. I mean, that's this, say I'm supposed to. So, when you do hear from God, don't go, ain't I something? I'm so wonderful. I heard from God. And God's up there going, saying, Whew, man, they really are dumb, aren't they? Because we're all supposed to hear from God. But some people act like, wow, why? Wow. Now, you might be surprised you heard from God. I've done that. It's like, I really did hear from God. I really did. I really did. But I heard from God. Now you're in trouble, man. Because for some reason, you got it in your silly, goofy little head that makes you better than somebody else when we're all supposed to hear from God. See, my endeavor as a pastor all these years is I want, peop I want you to hear from God. Why? Because you're supposed to. You're supposed to hear from God. But as we look in Psalms 23, David begins to reveal he's got a heart after God because remember, that's what God was looking for. He said, I'm looking for someone who has a heart after me. And he found, and what is a person that has a heart after a God? It's simply someone who goes, bah, and he follows the shepherd. He follows the shepherd. Do you know really my only job is, all my job is supposed to do is to follow the shepherd, say what he tells me to say, do what he tells me to do. You know, really in a natural, that's what our government officials in this nation are supposed to do. They're not supposed to be telling us what to do. They're supposed to be listening to the people. But they've done what a lot of us have done. We think we're in charge. My job is to follow God. That's all I'm supposed to do. You know, that's all Jesus did. 
That's all Jesus did when he went, when he went to Lazarus. Do you know, you remember even Elijah when he caught fire down from heaven? Remember what he did? He stood there and he, he dumped all the barrels of water on there. He had built the altar. He had put the calf on there. He had sliced that calf in half and did all the things. And then he stood there and he simply, he simply looked up to heaven. He didn't get real loud and real emotional. And real. No, God, he said, Lord, I've simply done everything you told me to do. And he stepped away and the fire fell. That's Christianity. You don't have to work it up and hype it up. And it's simply doing what God tells you to do. Love your wives as Christ loved the church. Oh, it's going to kill me, yeah? Do what he says. I heard an amazing story, and we'll just, we're just gonna, I'm just going to take a little bit of time to get ready to get into this. I heard an amazing story today as Cowboy Dan left Pastor Dan. He told me a story, he said, and I don't know, I guess he must have told the story. I wasn't here. He told the story about maybe, did he tell the story about the guy, this cowboy who went to his attorney, he was going to divorce his wife. He says, I want to divorce my wife. I got to get rid of her. She is such a pain in my neck. Why? All she ever does is nag. And he says, the attorney who was a Christian, he used a little bit of wisdom. He said, I tell you what, do you want to really get back at her? Yeah, I want to get back at her. He said, let's do this then. For the next month, just begin to treat her like she's the best thing you've ever had. Just be nice. Just be sweet. Take her out to eat. Just just lavish everything on her. And after 30 days, come in and we'll slap her with a divorce. Just, that'll really hurt her. Just really do her wonderful. And just, and you know you don't mean it, but just do her wonderful for 30 days. Just do her good. And then we'll pull the rug out from underneath her. And he said, yeah, that'd really be, that'd really show her. So he did it. He went out there and the attorney, how you doing, man? I took her out to eat today and I bought her this and I bought her that and I've been getting her candy and this went on and, and he kept, he checked with him in the beginning, but 30 days went by and he thought, well, he didn't call me back. 60 days went by. So he caught, he called the guy up and he said, hey, he said, I've been waiting for you to come in and get divorced. He said, what? He said, remember the trick we're going to pull on your wife? He says, are you nuts? She's the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> I thought, man, that's pretty good. He didn't do it for the right motive, but it produced the right results. Just do the word. So the Lord is my shepherd. So David, he's the one who faced Goliath. He's the one who killed the lion and the bear. He's the one... And I believe this is the foundation of his walk of faith. I really do. The Lord. So why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? The Lord is my shepherd. Now, that means he must have known that he was a sheep or he was a lamb. So in order to be led by God, in matter of fact, man, I, I've done a lot of teaching on sheep. But in order to be led by God, that means you, you've got to kind of have a character of a, of, a, of a sheep, of a lamb. And Christ does. Christ is the lamb. We talked about this on Sunday. So even though he's king of kings and lord of lords, and even though he's the lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus has the nature of a lamb. Now remember, Christ always has been. So the, Christ wasn't born into this world to become like a lamb. He was a lamb. And God created sheep to reveal his character, that side of him. Matter of fact, I think that's why probably the angels rebelled against God because they never saw him as the lion. They only saw him as the lamb. They never saw him as the lion. When he comes back the next time, he's coming back with a rod of iron. Flames of fire coming out of his mouth. They never saw that part of him before. But when we talk about being a lamb, what does it mean? It's to, it, it, the gentleness of a lamb, the quietness of a lamb, the meekness of a lamb, the innocence of a lamb. Uh, lambs are very content. They're grazers. Goats are never content. We had goats. Goats were always getting out of the fence. 
Our, our, our sheep, we had, we had sheep across the street. Must have five or six or seven sheep. They very seldom ever got out of the fence. They're very easily spooked. We know that there's some negative characteristics about sheep. Sheep are very dumb, by the way. Sheep is probably one of the only animals that need to have protection. Almost all animals have some kind of built-in protection. Sheep don't. Sheep don't have no protection. They can be easily devoured by wolves or by bears. And so their complete dependence, especially in the Middle East, they've got to have a shepherd. They've got to have someone who will provide, who will protect, who will, who, when they get hurt, that will, will fix their wounds. You know, really, sheep, do you, do you know not only that, but I know this is not going to sound good, but sheep have got to be sheared. See, sheep begin to accumulate a lot of wool. I remember I was uh, in Wisconsin. I, 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 we were hunting one day, and there was this old farmer that had a big old woods, and actually... He was really nuts, and me and the guy I was with, Claire Flintrup, one day, we were on his property hunt, hunting geese we weren't supposed to. I was probably only about 12 years old, and we actually got, ended up getting in a gunfight with him. He was shooting at us, and we were shooting back. I don't think our shotgun pellets were reaching him, but we were blasting away like the Hatfields and the McCoys. Wham, wham, he's shooting at us. We're shooting at him, man. We're running for it, man. He was nuts, but we were nuts, but he had, he had sheep in his woods that he never took care of. He never sheared the wool. And there was nothing but worms and parasites and thistles. They were the ugliest, nastiest group of sheep I ever did see. Because that, that excess wool needed to be sheared off of them because otherwise it would begin to, they weren't made to have all of that wool on them. You know, that's one reason why Jesus told us, forsake everything. You can't be a healthy lamb with all of this stuff hanging on you because you will not hear his voice. That's, he told the rich man, remember he told the rich young ruler, that's why there's so much insanity being preached right now. He told the rich young ruler, go sell all that you have, why? For you can follow me. You can't follow God with all this stuff hanging on you. You're just too busy taking care of your house, taking care of your car, taking care of your boat, taking care of your stuff. You can't follow him. So even before we get into talking about following Christ, isn't that the very first thing that Jesus came out of his mouth when he was done teaching? He said to Peter and John and James and Bob, he said, follow me, follow me, follow me. Well, you can't follow him if all of the voices of your stuff fix me, feed me, paint me, take care of me, clean me. And we're listening to all the wrong voices. So, see, nothing had a hold of Jesus but the Father. And that's where I need to be. How about you? So the Lord is my shepherd. Well, if God's going to be your shepherd, you gotta be. You gotta be a lamb. You gotta have the characteristic of a lamb. Now, there's some. There's some. There's some aspects of lamb, their vision. First of all, a lamb's vision is very bad. Did you know that? First of all, the the vision. You know, any of you gotta re, use reading glasses to read. You know, is that called nearsighted or farsighted? Huh? Nearsighted. When you gotta use glasses to read. Well, sheep are not real good at close up. But sheep are not real good at far away. They have no depth perception. For in other words, I, t I, I read a story about some sheep over there in, 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 in Europe, and I forgot, it was in a mountainous area, and almost all sheep have a lead sheep. There's always lead sheep among the flock, and I'm not talking about American sheep where we just put them in a pen. No, over there they don't have pens. They have a pen. They put them in at night to protect them when they bring them back, but they take them into the mountains. They're out there in the mountains, right? And there's always a, what they call a lead sheep, and there's one lead sheep. The shepherd was doing something. I don't know where he went. He must not have been a good shepherd, and they're all following this lead sheep, and he's, this lead sheep sees some fresh grass across this ravine, went to leap the ravine. All of the sheep followed that one lead sheep and they all fell to death because to her it looked like it was 15 feet away but it was 40 feet away 
And what does that mean? That means sometimes God will make promises to you, and it's true, it's correct, but you think it's 15, 15 days away when it might be 40 years away. So you leap to your death. Or you get the cart before the horse. And have you ever do that? You get a prophetic word, and it's God. But it ain't for tomorrow. It ain't going to happen. You know, that's what God gave to Abraham. He said, Abraham, you're going to become the father of many nations. Twenty-some years went by, nothing happened. And so, the, and this is what God said to Sarah came to Abraham and said, now, Abraham, you know that word that God gave you was from God. Yes, I know it was from God. Well, you know, but God didn't tell you how it was going to happen, did he? Well, no. Well, I know how it's going to happen. How's that? You're going to go into my handmaiden, Hagar, and you're going to have a baby by her. Really? Yeah. I don't know, Sarah. Oh, yeah. We don't know how long it took, but Sarah finally conv convinced Abraham that's how God was going to do it. And so he did. Sure enough, she gave birth to Ishmael. Ishmael must have been 10, 12 years old. He's pouring his life into Ishmael. God shows up and says, get ready, Sarah's going to have a baby. What? What do you mean Sarah's going to have a baby? She's 90 years old, I'm 99, and I've got Ishmael. Ishmael, Lord, Ishmael. That's what he said. He said it a number of times. He said, no, Abraham, you had depth perception problem. I wanted to wait until you were hopeless, and then I'm going to give you a baby. See, we, we want to hear from God, but we assume a lot of things. There's a lot of assumption in us. God, deliver us. So we got to be sheep. Go back. We got to have a heart of David. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now, you ought to write that in big, bold letters. I shall not want. Why would David say that? Because as long as you're wanting anything other than your shepherd, you will be listening to the wrong voices. I don't want to be loved. I want to be blessed. I want this. I want that. I got to have this. I got to have that. Listen, God will be speaking. You won't hear his voice. Because what you want is louder than what God is saying. So like I said, we can teach you how God speaks, but if you got, I want a better job, I want a better house, I want a better husband, I want a better this, I want to be loved, you can't hear the voice of God because you're consumed by what you want. The Lord is my shepherd, David said. And all that a lamb needs is a shepherd. If you've got a good shepherd, you've got it made in the shade, man. You've got a good shepherd, all that you need is taken care of. You don't even have to be the brains of the outfit, praise the Lord. He's the brains of the outfit. Amen. So I'm talking about trying, I'm doing some very elementary teaching here, believe it or not. Just very, very basic teaching, man. I, you know, I just want to... You know, it's like trying to teach people ABCs, and you've had them in your classroom for 20 years, and now they're, you know, 25 years old, and you still can't get them to get their ABCs down. You know, and I think that's where God's at a lot of time. God's saying, man, I just, want, I just want to teach you some." And the very basic thing is this, though I am your shepherd, follow me. Isn't that what he said to Peter? Peter said, what about John? He said, what is it with you if I, if I have him remain to our return? He said, follow me. So the very first words that Jesus said to Peter is the last words he said, follow me, Peter. Just that's all your job is, F-O-L-L-O-W, follow me. Doesn't that make our job easy? Just we get in trouble, though, because... We got our own agenda, or we're excited about what God is going to do, so I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Pastor, why are we doing all these meetings every day? Because I believe I'm following Jesus. He said, do these meetings. He didn't say these meetings would be packed out in the beginning. He just says, I want you to do these meetings. Okay, Lord. 
I want you to buy a bus. Okay, Lord, I want you to go to Indiana. Lord, I don't want to go to Indiana. Go to Indiana. Yes, Lord. Yeah, but everybody's telling me that we got the same Holy Ghost they got there. I know. Just do what I tell you to do. Well, why can't we sacrifice over here? No, go to Jerusalem three times a year. Man, that's a long way to go. Go to Jerusalem three times a year. Yes, Lord. See, the problem with the people in, in Egypt, that when they came out of Egypt into the promised land, he was just trying to teach them to follow him. Fire by night, cloud by day. It was obvious. Man, I wish God would speak to us that obvious, Pastor Mike. If I would just see a fire by night and a cloud by day, I would never go astray. Oh, really? I think this is more obvious than a fire by night and a cloud by day. And we can't even do it. <laughs> God doesn't talk to me, Pastor Mike. You're lying. He talks to you all the time. It's just we don't want to listen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Of course, green pastures is the word of God. He's going to make me eat. First thing, Peter, do you love me? Yes. Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Three times. Feed my people. Feed them. Feed them what? The word of God. So that's my very first job. It's to feed you the word of God, not give you a good building and comfortable seats and air conditioning and a place to live. And My first job is to feed you. That's what we're doing right now on satellite. We're trying to feed you. That's my first job. Why? Because if you don't eat healthy... See, there's some awesome things about sheep also. Sheep, believe it or not, their, their eyesight is not good. So you can't live by what you see. We don't live by what you see because what you see probably isn't real. You, you, you know, everybody saw a giant. David was looking through the eyes of a lamb following the shepherd. He saw an uncircumcised man who was defying his shepherd, his Lord, and he was dead meat. No, to David, Goliath was dead meat. And guess what? He was. To the other guys, he was a giant. You know why? Because they're listening to the wrong voices. Listen, I'm going to tell you this right now. Do you, I really am convinced the reason why most Christians die from cancer, because they're listening to the wrong voice. They're listening to the voice of fear. Fear, you'll die, you'll die, you'll die. Well, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. So take fear out of the equation. And what are you going to do? See, because let me, I'll give you an example. You go to a car lot. You know that car salesman knowing, I don't know what the stats are. It's really, matter of fact, I heard some stats today. I did not like what I heard that Pastor Bob or Pastor Dan, before he left today, he, he told me this. He said that, People who really are committed to going to church in America, you know, I mean, whether it be a good church or a bad church, just going to church, period. Just, we're going to go to the house of God. It's down to 1% of the population of America. We are in trouble, 1%, that are committed going every Sunday to church. See, people who are listening to God, well, God isn't telling me to go to church. No, he told you to go in his word, and you just hardened your heart. I don't need to go to church. You've hardened your heart. You know, I don't need to gather together. I can give you 30 biblical reasons why you're supposed to gather. Well, I'm not getting fed spiritually. Let me ask you something. When Jesus went to the synagogue, and he was his tradition, and that's when he read uh, uh, out of the book of Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. How, how many know he probably didn't learn one thing in that synagogue because he knew more than all did at 12 years old, man. For three days he had the experts baffled with answering and asking questions. So he went to the synagogue and he had a zip the lip and he knew what they were saying was wrong, but he still went. What would Jesus do? He still went. Well, I'm not going. You just hardened your heart to the will of God. Lifting holy hands without wrath or doubting. Well, I'm not going to lift my hands today. I just, I don't think it's necessary. You just ignored the voice of God. 
This is the voice of God. See, that takes faith. That's why I taught this series on faith. It takes faith to follow the voice of God. It takes faith to follow the voice of God. And he says, when I come back, will there be any faith left? Well, Pastor, I really blew it. Okay, then just do what the Bible says. Confess your sins, repent. Now it's water under the bridge. Do what Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. For instance, take the scripture and don't let the devil beat you up. If you blew it, let, let, let's, and we know there's a lot of it in America. You've been through divorce, or now you're remarried, or you're divorced. You can't change that past. No, honestly, you can't change the past. Don't live in it. Don't live in the past. As long as you're in the past, you know what? Matter of fact, Paul even went to say, he says, if you're married, stay married. If you're single, if it's possible, stay single. Just do what the word says. Hello? <laughs> I'm married now. Well, do what the word says. Are you getting anything? So the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. So there's something in David, the word maketh. I've got to eat. I've got to eat. It says, desire the sincere miracle of the word that you may grow thereby. I'm talking about getting your heart ready to hear the voice of God. So you, he's got to be your shepherd. That means sheep need a shepherd. You need, and believe it or not, you do in the natural, you do need to have what we call the fivefold ministry gifts, whether you believe it or not. But they got to be men and women that, of integrity that believe the truth. They can't be tickling your ears. They can't be false teachers, false prophets, preaching another gospel. So we need them. I knew that as a baby Christian. I knew, and I'm not declaring I'm very mature in the Lord. I don't know how mature I am in the Lord. The Bible says, are you not carnal comparing yourself one to another? All I know is I look at men before me, I go, help Jesus. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. But I knew I needed, I saw lots of flaws in the body. I saw lots of flaws in leadership. But I just, what I simply did is I ate the good and spit out the bad. You're going to have to do that with my preaching. You're going to have to make sure what I'm preaching is good and not bad. And you're going to hear things that are off the wall. But you got to know they can't be off the wall because you go, I just don't believe what he said is true. No, you got to have biblical scriptural reasons why you don't believe it. You know how I many people I run into that just, well, that's just the way I believe it. I can't believe it. Yeah, they're just, I said, well, give me scriptures for what you believe. They can't give me scriptures. What do I do? I let them alone. So the Lord is my shepherd, I shall want. I didn't even get out of Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. So he wants, the still waters is, is, is speaking about the Spirit of God. So it's not just the grass. It's got to be water. How many know we need water? He's, Jesus said, my words are spirit in our life. We need that spirit moving in us, not just, you know, like a college professor standing up there wrapping up information and points and so forth and so on. No, we need the moving of the spirit. We need it. We got to have it. We got to have the manifestations of Spirit, we gotta, we got to have the moving of the Holy Ghost because otherwise we're not going to be healthy sheep. How many know that sheep without water could not last very long? And, it, and, and it's got to be clean, pure water, not contaminated with all kinds of bacteria and, and urine. You know what? Sheep are so stupid, they will, they will um, what do they call it? They will, they will go in their own water. They will stand in the water and they will... They will pee in it and poop in it. Can I say that? There's other official words. I can't say it. Defecate, right? Def defecate. They will defecate. Whoa, ain't I smart? They will defecate. That's my PhD coming out. They, <laughs> they, will, they will defecate in their water. So the water has got to be fresh and it's got to be, it can't just, it can't be a puddle. It's got to be moving. It's got to be flowing. It's got to be, to keep it pure and clean. You know what, man? Shh. A lot of muddy water around, ain't there? You gotta, you gotta, this all has to do with hearing from God. 
This all has to be, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me the light of ground, green pastures. He leadeth me beside the world. He restoreth my soul. So, so notice the process here. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holding acceptable unto God, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, perfect will of God. So let's go a little bit deeper. The first three verses, by the way, of Psalms 23 is major. It sets it up for all, everything else in Psalms 23. The first three verses. The very first three verses, it says, I, you have got to renew your mind if you're going to follow the shepherd. And the very first way of, because remember, he's going to lead you in through what? The valley of the shadow of death. You're going to go through the valley of the shadow of death, but your shepherd is with you with his rod and his staff. Well, you're not ready for the valley of the shadow of death if you don't have the shepherd, because the wolves are going to get you, the bears are going to get you, the coyotes are going to get you. I mean, the snakes are going to get you. You're going to die in that valley of the shadow of death. You know, I know people say, well, all things work together for good. No, it doesn't. It says all things work together for good to them that what? That love God. A call according to his purpose. All things work together for those who are following their shepherd. But if a lamb stops following the shepherd, he's dead. He's a goner. It's over with. And then God gets the blame. God gets the blame. Matter of fact, Pastor Dan, before he left, he, I didn't realize this. He said as a young man, well, see, he was married before. I don't know if you know his story. And him and his wife went through some problems, and they got separated, and his wife and his son was instantly killed in a car accident. And uh, he went to the church funeral, and people were telling him, well, oh, brother, you know, all things work together for good. God had a purpose in this. It wasn't God. God didn't take his wife and his, his son. But he didn't know that at the time. It was the devil. It was the devil. Somehow they were not following the voice of God. When you don't follow, I've had tragedies in my life because I didn't listen to God. See, how many times do we not get in trouble because we just, how many you knew in your heart you shouldn't do it, but you did it anyways. And then what happened? Tragedy comes. And then guess who gets the blame? God gets the blame. I'm telling you, there is so much stuff out here that is nothing but a bunch of lies. God always gets the blame. But he's the father of lights in whom every, you know, no verbal is now so turning every good and every perfect gift comes from him. So anyways, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters of hell. If I'll let him lead me to a place where the Holy Spirit is moving, where God is manifesting, where there's life and there's truth and there's victory and there's deliverance and there's freedom, if I'll let him lead me to that place, right? And he restores my soul there. And then... He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Leads me in paths of righteousness. People don't want to follow Jesus into righteousness. They'll say, well, I'm righteous because he's righteous and he took my sin. No, no, no. It's more than just saying it. You're following the shepherd. Where is Jesus? If you're following Jesus, where is he taking you? I can tell you real quick while you're following Jesus. He's taking you into right living. He's taken you into holiness. He's taken you into the heart of the Father. He's taken you into obedience. He's taken you. It's not legalism. You call it legalism all you want. It's not legalism. He's taken you into living right, doing right, thinking right, speaking right, acting right. We're just getting ready to teach on the 20 ways that faith, uh, the 20 ways that God speaks to us. 20 awesome ways that God speaks to us. But this is just basic. Your heart's got to be, you got to want to, you got to want to have a heart that wants to follow God. If you don't have a heart that wants to follow God, see goats, see sheep over in the Middle East, they lead them. They follow, you'll follow, you'll see, you, now they have sheep dogs, but because they're trying to protect them from animals and so forth and so on. But you'll see a shepherd, he's going before the flock. A goat herder, I think many pastors are goat herders, they're behind. The, do you know sheep, 
they've got very sensitive noses. Sheep has very, you know, they ain't got good eyesight, but they can smell. They can, I don't know, everything seems to be legit, but I'm not talking about suspicion now. I'm talking about, now you can't, there's a lot of people who are just suspicious. You know, they see a devil behind every doorknob. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying there's been many times when people came in here and not judging their hearts and we're saying, you know what, everything looks okay, but something just don't smell right. I don't know what it is. I can't, I can't put my finger on it. And that's, that's for all the sheep. All the sheep should have that ability. Not suspicious, not paranoid. You can get that way, though, can't you? Not panicky, though sheep are easily panicked. It's like a lot of times I just keep my, 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 my family will say, because, you know, they've been with me ever since. You know, they were born into the ministry, quote, unquote, believe it or not, some, some, some spiritual principles rub off on you. And somebody will come into the church, and they won't even know them. And, of course, right away they're a little bit suspicious because everything we've seen in the last, you know, ever since they were born. But they'll go, Dad, I'm not speaking evil about this new guy who just came, but something just don't seem to be right. I said, I know. Just be quiet and let's pray. It'll come out. It'll pop to the surface. And it always does, doesn't it? We see it all the time. It's not that we're wanting to think evil or believe evil, but sheep have. And you know what? Their taste buds, they, they, they got really sensitive taste buds. Goats, they just eat anything. So when food is coming across this pulpit, I just saw it the other day. Food's coming across this pulpit, and something that is said, and we go, that don't taste right. Something's spoiled with that. Something just doesn't. I can't put my finger on it, Pastor Mike, but some what that man said, because you know what, right now you're eating in, you're drinking in my words, aren't you? You're eating and drinking my words. And so you go, man, that, that, that tastes pretty good. Oh, that doesn't taste that good. Well, that, man, to spit that out, that'll kill you. You know, there's sometimes when we had people up here and the food they gave, the people ran out of the sanctuary. They said, I can't, I can't hear this, man. That's, that's rotten food. Just like Michael, I was going to tell you, I opened up your refrigerator tonight, and there's something rotten in your refrigerator. I think I told you that two weeks ago. You're going to have to pull all the food out and clean it out when you get home. There's something rotten in there, and you know that rotten will get into the rest of your food? It'll permeate it? Yeah, and everything will taste rotten. So sheep have very sensitive taste buds. Well, we're just getting ready to teach on... The 20 ways that God leads us. Did you get something tonight? Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. You can stop the recording then.